The game is Embers Adrift, a new MMO. In this video, I'm going to be doing some advanced tips and tricks, just kind of going over um, a lot of the basics of the game, but from a more advanced perspective, trying to do a little quick. I put a video out a few days ago, um, check my history, check in my playlist for Embers Adrift. It should be the only one in there. It's the first one I made for it. Kind of like if you're on the fence about this game, what's the game really like, what's it about, what I've experienced, and then some uh, some basic tips and tricks, you know, how to get started, what things are, what things mean. Um, in this video, I'm just going to kind of try to, I'm going to try to be quick about it, and it's not so long-winded, but I just want to go over some basics, right, and some more advanced stuff. Like, basically touch on the stuff that I discussed in the other video, but I didn't want to go into too much detail for everything. You know, just been been a little bit too much it was already two hours long just touching everything so right now i'm in the bank i'm in the main town here's the map so this is new haven city the newbie zone is to the south the uh level like 8 to 15 zone is above it um i am right here in the crafter's corner um so i'll just i'll talk about this town since i got the map up crafter's corner where you can do your crafting, buy recipes, you got crafting bench over here, crafting system's pretty simple. Um, you go in here, you got these little tabs, like right now I'm just gathering, I have two gathering skills. But you can craft the gathering stuff, right? So you, you get XP, and you can check your skills down here on this little button. I'm just going to go through this stuff real quick. So that's my combat skill, forester, hunter, so logging and plants, um, and hunting would be like skinning. They're my two skills right now. And then I can craft the stuff I get into crafting components. Now you get XP for collecting it, and you get XP for crafting it. That's important. Um, so you just leveled up. You get, So you level up that skill by crafting certain things. <clears throat> so, uh, the bank is right here. Inside the bank, you have your bank chest right here. Um... You have, you, you can keep your gold stash here. You click this little button, hit deposit, hit withdraw, whatever. I have no money to deposit. You click this uh, button to purchase more slots. So at first you get one, and then for one silver you get another slot. Then for ten silver you get another slot. Then for fifty silver you get another slot. Then for one gold you get another slot. Um, so very limited space. Um, so, you know, you don't have, you got to pick and choose what you're storing a lot of times. This is your personal um what's it called uh do, 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 i don't know what it's called but basically this is what you use to trade uh stuff to your alts so this is your shared bank i guess you would call it and you could put gold in here as you can see i put some gold in there for my alts to pull from and stuff like that in case i you know roll a new character or something um and then i just have this so actually i wanted to pull that on my warden so let me grab that out um yeah, so and then uh, so that's your bank. Any any of these chests work. It doesn't matter. It's just places for people to stand. That's your shared bank. This is lost and found. So if there's a bug or a glitch, you can't put anything in this storage. But if there's a bug or a glitch that causes your items to disappear, the devs will stick your stuff in there for you. Funny because I see these people, and these I see them all the time. Lethal, I've grouped with Rigor. I've grouped with before. Um, I think that do I did. You just see the same people because the community is relatively small. You know, I'd imagine there's maybe a thousand, two thousand people playing now. There was a slight drop um, recently because the one month free subscription ran out. So people who did not want to renew um, are no longer playing. The people that jumped on on day one and didn't want to renew after a month, um, you know, they left. So it, you, there was a slightly noticeable drop when that happened, but it's still pretty populated. And a bunch of new people are coming in. Um, you know, some popular YouTubers are starting to make videos about this game. And, yeah, we're getting a lot of lot of new players in. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this again. Just kind of go through some tips and tricks. Because uh, it's kind of confusing when you first start. So let me go out to the newbie area over here. We got merchants and stuff over here. Oh, before I do that, let me show you where you get your classes. So when you hit level 6, you pick your... You got your base class, which is Tank Healer or DPS. When you hit level 6, you come over here and get your advanced class or your actual class. So Warlord is a healer. Your trainer is there. He'll give you a stupid little quest. Go out, kill one thing, get one thing, and bring it back. Sentinel is a healer. Duelist is a healer. So there are your three healers. 
You got your tanks back here. Berserker, Juggernaut, and Knight are for tanks. Here's your basic trainer, right? So because you can you can swap your you could swap like I could swap from my character from a striker to a supporter. It would reset you down to zero if you did it though. You're better off just making a new character, but you can do it. You can also swap your main class. Um, but here's your DPSers, right? Your Marshal, or I'm sorry, your Brigand, your Warden, and I forget where your Berserker is. I think he, I think a Berserker might be up this way or something. Anyway, that area right down here, Rangers Guild training area. Um, so let's go out. So bank ran down here, ran over here. Now I'm running out. Vendor for Lantern. If you watch my other video, I do a Lantern comparison. You start with a torch, but you can buy this Lantern for 10 silver. I think it's right here. Yeah, so you can buy a torch for 1 silver. Or you can buy the Lantern. I thought, I, did I miss it? I don't like how, like, that goes over them. Yeah, there's the Lantern right there. 10 silver. Um, the Lantern is brighter, stronger, but you see how, like, it hurts my eyes. Um, it's, I would recommend a torch, but if you want your light to cast farther, like, see, uh, see how it lights up the wall that far away, the torch would not do that. So if you're going through a dungeon or a cavern and you want to see the walls and stuff like that, and that brightness doesn't bother you, definitely worth the money. Another tip, this is the most basic tip, that big blue moon, old blue, they call it the uh, blooper. That's always north. That's your compass. There is no compass in the game. That is your compass. Um, these fires, it'll you know your quest will teach you about them. But these are basically at every respawn point. Um, when you stand next to them, if you die or as you do combat, you get percentage decrease of your health and your stamina. And sitting by these will gain it back. So that's how you gain those back. So you'll want to collect those throughout the map. And you can always see them because they have that big trail of smoke going up above them where a normal campfire does not let's check out the zoning times <clears throat> so far I'm having fun in the game a um, little bit of little bit of issues today finding groups not too much I played a lot today it's Sunday not too much issue finding groups but l definitely less activity than there was I think a lot of the people moved on went up into higher areas than I did because I, I play slower because I got a job and a family and all that stuff. It's harder for me to keep up with people who play all the time. And I re-rolled a character, so that didn't help. Two characters, autoholics, and um, with people dropping off too. But I see a lot of people underneath of me coming in. It's like, is this zone? let's see how many people are in it. So you can do who, right, in the zone. 73 players. Uh, that's that's about yeah, it's about the way it was. Um, is this the only instance? Probably the only instance. When when there's a lot of people, it does have instance zoning, um, but only only when it gets like a lot of people, like probably 100 plus or something like that. Anyway, so when you get started, so I covered this in the old vid in the other video, right? So here's my map. I have everything. Everything's undiscovered when you first start including these little marks, right? So the campfires won't be there, this tower won't be there until you find it. All this stuff won't be there until you find it. When you start, kill stuff around here. Animals, kill kill these bucks, kill the deer. They drop more loot for whatever reason, it seems like. Uh, kill stuff that are yellow, white, blue. Do not kill anything that's green or red. You will get way reduced experience for it. Don't waste your time on it unless you're trying to get loot from them. Um, let's see, these two dungeons over here, that's Central Veins East, Central Veins West, they, in the other zone, they also have Central Veins, they're just like little dungeons. There's a primary quest you'll get it when you come here, it's called The Apprentice, from a guy, um, that's an important quest, and I wanted to, one thing I confirmed on my alt character, because I got a different reward, is that it does split off. So, when you go and do this quest, uh, I'm trying to, here, let me look at my notes, I'll go through it again. I do have notes on my quest. Alright, so when you get this, I think it sends you up here to this camp. 
And nope, that's arms. Sorry, wrong one. That's the wrong one. Um, go to cave east. Okay, so I think you just have to go here and like explore this cave, like just walk in front of it and ticks it off. Um, then he'll send you back to this guy, and then he'll send you to this tower. This is uh, what is that? Halix Tower or whatever it's called. You'll talk to him. There's two other guys here to give you two other quests. Pick them up while you're here. Um. And then it wants you to go and look for a sketchbook, a notebook, and a backpack. What you want to do is go to East in here first for the pencil. You want to go in. Let me see if I can pull up a map for you real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. New Haven. Let me just pull up this map for you here so I can show you. So this is the Central Veins map somebody made so that's the west entrance this is the east entrance one thing you want to note some people call this the north some people call this the south people who have seen the map will be like this is the north entrance this is the south entrance the the correct way to do it is the east entrance you enter it from the east part of the zone which i was showing you anyway this q1 here is the pencil so you just come in go up go around here there'll be some non-aggro bunnies in here walk up to a little statue, boom, that's done. So that's very easy. Now you could fight your way all the way through here and go up in here and do the rest. But honestly, in a, with a new group, noob group, it's easier just to leave and go into the west. You could actually do this yourself. You can go in here, there's like one guy you gotta kill or something like that, and then you can get it yourself. Um, but usually, the whole, you know, you're gonna be doing it with a group. Then you go over to the west side, and as you can see, you go up here, around, Get that one, come over here, get this as the backpack right here. Then your quest will update and tell you to find evidence or remains. What you want to do is swing around this way, come through here. This has a bunch of mobs in it. You definitely need a group for this, and your group needs to be on point. You want to kind of stay back while you pull, and then pull all the mobs that are around here. There's a little cage here, like a, like a, like a little dungeon cage. Uh, what do they call them? They used to have, like medieval times they put people in them and let them rot and turn into skeletons you just walk up to that it'll trigger the quest and then you come back right so when you do that you come back uh da, 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 da. Yeah, it says go deeper and find a cage for adlin or something like that then you return to this guy right this is the key moment this is why i'm telling you all this he's, he's working on the apprentice quest right now <clears throat> the reason why i'm telling you this is because at it it says, and I don't know the choice exactly, but it says something like, you'll do it yourself or you'll ask the guards for help. And I think if you do it yourself, that puts you on a quest line for a necklace that gives like three regen, like HP regen and stamina regen. It's not a bad necklace, but I was really disappointed with it. If you say, I'm going to notify the guards first, it'll send you up into the city. You'll talk to some guards, you'll talk to a shopkeeper in there, she'll accuse you of stealing her wheat. You have to, like, prove her wrong, you have to come down here, talk to, uh, is this the windmill? I think this is the windmill here. Someplace around here is a windmill, you'll be able to see it from, like, maybe this town. I think this is the windmill. You have to go to the windmill, then I think you have to go to, like, this little ruins here. There's a little cart that has the wheat in it. But if you're on that path, you're gonna get a really good weapon. Uh, one hand weapon. Now, I don't know if this is per, you know, tanks get something different, DPS gets something different. I did two DPS classes, so I don't know the exacting details, but I do know after you go into CV, east and west, and you find those parts, and you come back to him, you want to be very careful about which path you choose. Um, you might want to ask. I don't have any more details than that, but that's an important part, and I just kind of wanted to stress that. As the other thing that confuses people, there's a quest called finding, like, weapons caches. That's up here. So you basically just want to come up to here. There's a little weapons rack. Easiest way to do it is send somebody in, aggro all the mobs, and train them out. And then everybody else can kind of go in there and get the weapons rack. And then, you know, they'll, they'll eventually uh, leash and come back. And then you have to run over here for the second weapons cache. There's a little shack. It's inside the shack. Very easy to get to. That, that makes that one a lot easier. But there's all kinds of quests here. Quests give very good rewards. Recommend doing them all. But the, the Apprentice quest travels, you know, you, you take that on to the next 
thing. You don't really get it done until maybe like your level 10 is when you're getting... 9, 10, 11 is when most people, I think, get it done. Alright, let me see. Yeah, there's the windmill. That, er, nope, that's not the windmill. Uh, there's the windmill. This one. If if it takes you looking for wheat and you gotta do something with the miller and you gotta go talk to the miller, I think that's the path. That's the one I got my weapon with. I think I have the weapon on me. The New Haven Blade. So that's a nice weapon. Level 10, 2d4 plus 5, high DPS, it's 3 second delay. It's a really good offhander or main hander. So like what I use this for is I'll, if I'm in a group, I'll be backstabbing and using that as my offhand. And when I solo, I just do that. So now I have a good main hand weapon. Um, you know, the dagger isn't the best offhand because you want your high delay. Does this is actually like the worst offhand, but it doesn't matter that much. Like it's just something. It's a little bit better than having a dagger when you solo. Um, uh, let me see what else. Oh, let me go through equipment. So when you start, you have weight. Your weight limit is going to be your deciding factor to what gear you have on. So as a DPS, I'm not too worried about armor class. I'm more worried about getting that flanking damage up. I want flanking. I want to stack flanking. I want haste. I want, you know, stamina regen. I want stuff that's going to help me do damage in a group. That's what I want. But I do want AC as much as I can get. So if you look at this, this takes three uh, weight, right? So that adds three to my max of 34. This increases as you level. But you're not going to be able to fill all your slots. So don't worry about that. What you want to do, though, is you don't want to have a big gap in your armor weight. If you got some armor weight, find something to fill the gap. Um, it's it's kind of uh, kind of important. Uh, another thing, they just changed the ancient bear quest. So there is a quest where you have to go up to this bear cave, and there used to be a thing where you had to fight the bear. Now you just have to kill ten of them. And when you do that, you have an option to get a cool-looking bear hat. I don't have it on this character because they didn't have it back then. But, you know, it's like a it's like a bear head. So just keep that in mind. Um, they, it has a lot of different options, but that's the only one that has a visual. Other than up here, two names spawn. There's a named bear that spawns. It drops really good loot, but hard. You need a good group to kill her at low levels. And there's a deer, the Knave of Hearts or something like that. And that deer will drop a helmet. That's pretty good. And have you'll have like deer antlers if you want like, yeah, you know, something that looks good more than just like a little, I don't know, was that a World War One helmet, little turtle shell helmet. <laughs> um, let me see what else. I'm sure, a lot of people ask when they get started, how do I repair? How do I repair? It's something I asked. I had no. I look. I ran up and down this strip looking for a way to repair. Here's how. You go over here. This little tiny anvil is how you repair. So you just click it. You can repair your uh, your gear. If you have money in the bank, it'll take it right out of the bank. You don't have to have money on you. In you? On you? Um, and I guess I have mine in my sh shared stash. So I don't have any in my bank, so I can't repair. Um, and then you have a little stash right here. This, this guy here is like your first trainer. So when you want to... When you first want to pick up a training skill... You can go to this guy, and you can pick up, you know, whatever you want. I would recommend a gathering before you do a crafting, because you're not going to have money to buy materials off anybody. So, recommend getting a, like, I always recommend Hunter, because you're going to be skinning. Because you'll be killing a lot of deer, boar, and stuff like that for the first few levels, so might as well work on that. Um, everything you gather goes into your gathering bag. It's a separate bag from your inventory bag. Um, it can only hold gathering materials. So you can swap them. You can drop them in this one. But for example, I can't put an axe in here. You know what I mean? It's only for raw materials. And even if I convert this wood and this log into like wood planks, I can't put the crafting material. It's only for gathered materials. Um, so ju just so you know, that's where I think it's G is the key. The hot key for it. But this is what you want to convert. This is what you're gathering. This is what you're going to want to convert to get experience but um yeah i would either do like um i hate that mouse over thing it blocks everything forester hunter are two good ones uh where's what is it where's the one for mining outfitter weapon smith tinker that's crafting 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 
Yeah, they don't have mining in here, which is strange. I, w I wouldn't really recommend mining at first. Maybe your second one. There's not a lot of mining nodes to level up on. That's why. There's a lot of trees. There's a lot of bushes to harvest. If you wanted to go um, uh, above Forester. But there's not a lot. Oh, there it is. Prospector. That's mining. Um, there's not a lot of uh, mining ores. Let me show you what a tree. A lot of people go. They get the thing and they don't know. They go out here and they try to chop a tree down. I try to do it myself. I'm like trying to chop chop stumps. I'm trying to pick up branches on the ground. Um, yeah, I'm trying to chop trees. And as you can see, there's like none out here, right? So a lot of times, like, the newbies come out here and they scarf them all up. So you got to go a little bit farther out than where everybody else would. But with skinning, as you can see, there's plenty of animals you're going to be killing them. So you'll, you'll, uh... You'll get the skinning up quicker. You can get you can get three total professions, which means you can get three. There's a log right there. So you want to look for these long brown logs on the ground, and that's what you're going to chop for uh, for wood. You can get three professions, so you can get three gathering if you want. Commonly, I think what people do if they do want to craft, they'll get one profession, like crafting profession, and two gathering professions. That support it. You'll you actually everything needs three pretty much. You need all three resources at some point. But for the majority, like eighty percent of it, you don't if you have just the two. I'm trying to see if I can find a bush so you can see what gathering the bushes. Yeah, so these are the bushes you want to look for too. So this is where you get your plants. Plants are used to make like cloth and different things. Um, so these raw these raw resources can get changed into multiple things, right? So I think the wood can only get changed into logs, but the plants can get changed into multiple things. The mushrooms that you can pick. I'm not going to try to look for a mushroom because they're they're a little more rare. Which is oh, there's a mushroom there. There's what the mushrooms look like for foresting. They're a little more rare, but and they're harder to see. But they're the three things you get with foresting, and because you got three things. It's easier to find stuff when you're walking around. And as you can see, I came out to the edges and I started finding them. That's because most people don't venture this far out. They kind of, you know, only come come so far out. So if you want to gather, come to the edges and look around. See, two more logs there. Um, all right, so that's crafting. What else? What else? D -d 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 Let me think. So a lot of people will ask... What about weapons? What about weapons? Um, so it depends on your class. If you're a DPS class, since I am, I'll go over that first. Um, hit I for your inventory. This is where everything's at. You got primary and secondary. You can keep two weapon sets here. Like, I could have a two-hander here and then my dual wield here if I wanted to, if I wanted to give up my range for pulling. Um, but basically how it plays out is... Um, let me see if I can pull something up and show you real quick. One second. I don't know if I can pull that. I just want to show you something. Something that I just kind of put together it might give you a little bit of an idea. Okay. Hopefully that's in the screen. Like that. There we go. All right. So these are just some weapons I wanted to compare. Like, I was like, is this better than that? How is it better than that? So, real quick, two over here means two-hander. This is the level. So we want to look at two-hander versus one-hander, right? So, um, let's do all the same level. Looks like I got a lot of level 10s. Let's do that. So we can compare the same thing here. Alright, so I got it sorted by DPS, right? Which is your uh, average damage... Uh, divided by your speed, right? So that's going to be your auto attack. You have auto attack and you have your abilities that do like weapon damage plus. And that doesn't count as your auto attack, so it's on a separate timer. So you're getting that plus your auto attack timer, um, which is important. So like, uh, let's take a look. All right, so we got, I got the hone tin. I got that in there twice. All right, so we got a sword versus a great sword. So a two-hander versus a one-hander. Same tier, honed, level 10. Um, if you look at this, this is the uh, dice rolls, the amount of dice, damage bonus, speed. This is the max hit. This is the average damage. 
and then this is the calculated DPS. So what's the difference? The great sword does lower auto attack. Aver on average, the DPS is going to be slightly lower than the sword. But if you look at the max hit, when you use your ability, you have a greater chance of doing a 17 damage hit than you do this, where your max can be a 10. So on average, when you use your ability, pow, to hit, you're going to be on average hitting more. You're going to be hitting for 11 instead of 7. But because it's so much slower, you're going to be doing less DPS. So it's a trade-off. That's how a lot of these weapons work. If you look at the daggers, it's, it's the same thing. Like, daggers are going to have... Here's yeah, great. So it's 10. It's on the same tier, level 10 dagger. It's going to have much better DPS than all three of these. But look, it drops down to 7 and 5. So, you know, do you want to hit on average for 11, 7, or 5 for your abilities? Or do you want higher auto damage? That's the simplistic version of it, is what I found. It works this way throughout all tiers. This is basically how it's designed, right? So, what you want to think about is how your class hits. What's better for your class? Are you hitting your are you hitting hard with your abilities often? Do you have a class that just blam 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 like a berserker would just like he's all DPS. He doesn't have all this utility stuff that a warden has. Warden has great damage, but with fewer abilities. So for warden, I would I feel inclined to use dual wield more than two hand because I use I'm using less auto attacks. I mean, I'm using less abilities and more auto attacks. I hit my ability, boom, it puts a dot on them. That dot ticks for 20 seconds while I'm auto attacking. So you got to think about how your class plays and how what's, what's the best way to kind of, you know, utilize your weapons. Now, overall, the thing that trumps everything is if I had a really good two-hander, that trumps everything. Like, if I got crappy one-handers, I'm going to go with two-hand until I get some better one-hander. So, like, you know, don't... We're, we're nitpicking here about how do you want to do it. Do you want to spam your abilities or do you use auto attack? It's more like a nitpicky kind of more advanced thing. And also keep in mind, all everybody's abilities can work with ranged. But if I showed you the calculation for ranged, range damage is like one tier under, right? So that's the way it usually works too. So range is going to be like basically would be like using a level 10 even if this was a level 15 bow and that's a level 15 weapon the bow would be damage equal to like a level 10 weapon so it's like one bow range damage is like one tier under or i guess you should say half a tier because a tier is 10 levels so like it steps up every five levels so every half a tier it steps up in damage weapons and stuff so what was my point it's just a lot of information to convey here um, and this is why I didn't want to get into this in the other video. I was just like, kind of just glancing over it. Cause it does get a little, a little complex when you start getting into the numbers. Um, so basically you just got to think of how, how your class balances out. Same with, uh, your tank. Do you want to use a two hander or do you want to use a sword and a board? Same as a healer. Healers can use a two hander for extra damage or they can use a one hand hammer plus a flag that gives some crappy stats. Starting out as a healer. Try to get yourself a good two-hander, because that flat, the flag will give you crappy stats. Uh, oh, I was talking about the bow and the abilities. So my abilities can be used with a bow, but the bow is a crappy weapon. You don't want to use that as your primary weapon. It's good for pulling. It's good for doing stuff. But so, like, you know, I could, I could, my dot right here that looks like a melee dot, I could Venom Strike that deer over there with my bow if I wanted to, and it would apply it, just like as if I hit it with my weapon. So keep that in mind as well. Kiting, you can kite in this game, but when you're when you're fighting, um, let me pull my weapon out. When you're fighting, you move a lot slower. You can get combat movement speed up. I don't know. Maybe end game. Maybe maybe end game kiting is viable. Maybe I could see you getting your combat movement speed up, so you can actually kind of do this a little bit. Maybe if you're a class that can snare them or something, or fear them. Or something like that, you'll be able to like range attack them and just like you won't even have to worry about damage and armor and that kind of stuff. I could see stuff like that happening end game, but I'm not there yet. I don't think anybody's there yet. I don't even think the game's been developed like that yet. So, uh, but I could definitely see how they're styling the combat to to be like that. Um, you got titles here, stats over here, highlight over them. Will tell you exactly what they do. It's pretty simplistic. Um, 
what else? Oh, you got your harvesting tools. Go in here. You can carry four of them. So you can have basically all... You can have all three gathering tools for all three gathering trait professions in here at once. Or another smart thing to do, if you only have one or two gathering and the rest is crafting, you can have duplicates in here so they don't, you know, in case they run out of durability. That's like, you know, the better crafted, you know, these are all like vendor bolt, but if these are crafted, they'd have better than 225 durability and probably like reduced gathering time. So keep that in mind. And I did show you guys, you can see your different levels down here right click on this little button and you can see what level and how much experience you got all right let me think what other kind of more advanced do you have auto loot when you click i could probably just sit in this newbie zone and look at what people are asking um what weapons can support uses so that's actually a good question so dps can use short bows long bows um range weapons support uses a crossbow, which is less range, slower damage kind of thing. Um, and tanks use, a, I forget what they're called, but they're basically a throwing knife. Um, maces, swords, flags, scepters offhand. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, it's, you'll, you'll figure stuff. Like, when you, when you mouse over a weapon, you can see, uh, see that STK striker. So it'll say what your base role has to be. And it can, I, I would imagine they can, like these things can get, get into advanced role. Like see how it says to use this weak doom spider venom. It says stalker, but also warden where this one just says this. No, they all say warden. Uh, but there are some that just say stalker. Um, so that's kind of where you can see like what can, who can and who can't use something. What the requirements are. Um, speaking of, that would be the next thing. So these little, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, consumables, weapon consumables. So if I, if I check this, see how it has a number pop up on that? So that means that this will give that ability a plus three damage mod and a plus one over time modifier. So it makes that ability stronger, but every time I use it, it consumes one of them. Um, I try to save these mostly when I'm soloing, unless we're in a group that... Um... Ooh, let's go kill a boss. I'll go help these guys kill it. If it's up. He might just be looking to like trying to spawn it or something like that. A lot of times people A lot of times people would be like, anybody wanna do like the <sighs> Sorry. Get distracted when I'm playing. Can't play and talk at the same time. Uh, a lot of times people would be like, anybody wanna get a group going for it? And they'll try to spawn them. Um, should so oh that's another thing look at this so when you're out of range like rare, very far away from a player you won't be able to see them but once you get within a it's a pretty big range once you get within range it'll show you the, their direction so I'd imagine I'm probably where am I I'm right at this camp so I'm like right here he's probably up here so it has a pretty decent range it's just a good way to like if they say hey we're in the Northwest you can just kind of head up into the northwest until they pop up on your radar. And then uh, and then you'll see it. Do you see how the screen just darkened? That's because this is a respawn point next to a campfire. Um, what else? So, rares. So, Knave of Hearts is rare. It's going to drop loot if we can get it before another group comes up. It's open world type thing. So, sometimes other groups will come up and jump you on it. That might be it there. It's a pretty big deer. The Knave of Hearts. Um, so you want to keep your eye out for, for rares. Um, and then that way you can find, get a group together and try to kill it. And get some loot. You can get some really good loot from these rares. Same as dungeons. And dungeons they will have them. They are... Four tier. So the Chevrons. If you watched my other video I explained it. But I guess I can explain that now while we're grouping up. See he wants to, he wants to know where it is. I'm going to... I ought to tell him it's on the east side. <laughs> I, I do. I want to be like east side because he'll want to come up and get a group together and come slam it real quick. So if I see somebody come up, I'm going to tag it. <clears throat> anyway, um, remind you, EQ. It's a dun it's a dragon. Another guild's going to come up and snag it. 
Um, so yeah, so the, the chevrons is what they're called, right? So a very reasonable challenge for a group or two. A group or two people should be able to take him down. Same type of con system. It's green, so it's easier for me. It's not gray yet. Um, so it goes gray to green. So gray, no experience. Green, very nerfed experience. Not even worth it. Blue, then white, even con. And then yellow, harder. Like, you know, a little bit harder. And then red, not worth it. They have nerfed experience on red, so don't even bother fighting red. Plus, I think reds do, like, they ignore, like, 50% of your armor anyway, so they'll just slam you. Um, so you, you only want to fight uh, blues, whites, and yellows. The chevrons are the difficulty of it, right? So you want to fight one chevrons, blues, whites, yellows, if you're soloing. You know, you can fight two chevrons solo. You got some good gear or something like that, or it's a green or maybe a white. You're going to have a really hard time. you got to have, like, a tweak twinked out dude to kill a two chevron yellow or something like that people used to be able to kill like gray green uh three chevrons but not anymore they increased the damage they don't want anybody soloing three chevron things or higher like see a two chevron like that that's almost like group content like if you're going to grind him like you could kill one by yourself a two chevron if if that was like white gun but you wouldn't want to grind on something like that for experience. If you were solo and you're going to want like a one chevron thing to solo. <clears throat> Smuggler Woodsman. So this is it though. It's like waiting around, getting a group together, waiting around. They're getting close, so everybody's on my radar. So everybody's close. We got a level 8, a level 9, a level 7, a level 10. And what am I? 16, I think. Let me think, what else can I uh, explain while we're waiting to kill this named? Uh, well, yeah, so speaking of the names, so just like in uh, EverQuest you have names, this guy will only spawn around this area. He's not going to spawn over here. So you have kind of like area placeholders designated for them. Some, place have some mobs have specific placeholders. Some mobs are just like a random chance from a, like any monster in this whole area could potentially, you know, you just got to slaughter a bunch of them to make them spawn. So it's kind of like EverQuest where it's like a percent chance to spawn and then it's tied into that spawn. So they probably have like, you know, certain spawns in here that when they die can pop this guy up, you know. And I don't know if they have a despawn system. Is he going to attack me? What are you doing? Are you going to come attack me? A little two chevron gray. So here's a sample of combat, right? So see how it's nice and long cast times? Long cooldown. So you're not slamming your abilities. You're kind of just laying it on them and then you're auto attacking for a while. I got no more damage abilities here um, that I can use. So I'm just auto attacking. And this is where that ability versus auto attack comes into play. Like how much damage are you doing? The Warden, this class, very nice damage doer, high end. Um, oh, what did I get? I get, ooh, ooh, I need that, I need that, I need that, I need all my other dude. Nice, all right. Oh, I heard that those guys dropped, the um, the Woodsman's dropped those recipes. I heard somebody mentioning something like that. I didn't realize I should be seeking after them. Is that my group or somebody else? That's not my group. I don't want to aggro them rats, they'll be annoying. Did somebody kill it while I wasn't looking? Oh no, there he is. <laughs> well, I guess I could do some gathering while I'm here. Yeah, I needed that recipe. I remember somebody saying, um, we're good with what we have, we got 16 DPS here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm 16, but that thing will still put a hurt on me, man. That's like, I'm not, I can't tank that. You need a tank to tank that, not a DPS. Need heal? Definitely need at least one healer for this guy. He's not hard. The bear is hard because he does like an AoE. Yeah, see how he's like, where's the missing wheat for the apprentice quest? He's on the right path to get the sword. And again, I, I think that's, uh, you gotta say you're, you're gonna let the guards know versus do it yourself. You want to go to the guards and get those extra steps. 
when you're in combat, um, there's two levels of combat. A lot of people don't know this. So right now, if I sat, I would get increased hit point regen and stamina regen, right? Just like everybody's a caster. Hold on, we're going to fight. But watch when I go in combat. Watch the symbol change. So he's going to aggro it. Because he aggroes it, I'll go in combat, I think. Let me see. No, I'm still out of combat. Oh, it's not aggro on me? Yeah, see, I haven't hit it, but I'm aggroed. But now when I hit it, it's going to turn a bright white. So those are your two levels of combat. Um, basically, that'll affect your regen. So that grayish that you seen before I hit it, but it was aggro on me because I got too close to it. That's one level. Oh, who's my tank? That guy. Give him my boost. Probably better give it to a DPS, but whatever. Help him keep aggro. Um, so when I'm full white like this, I'll have less regen if I sit down. I think practically none. But if it's gray, say you're a healer, you haven't hit him or healed or something yet. Let's see what the loot is. Oh, that's the helmet that I was talking about. I'm rolling for that. I'm rolling for it all. That's that's better than mine. Even though, even though I'm level 16, that's still better than mine. So I'm needing that and needing that. So I got the van braces and I got the helmet. Nice. Nice. I've always wanted that helmet. And they're legit. Even though I'm level 16, it's still legit upgrades, right? Um, so I'm not, like, stealing from Lobies. That's a legit upgrade. Two flanking, three combat move versus two flanking, one combat move. It's better armor than my old one. This is a better bracelet than my boiled, because you get your resilience and better armor. So, yeah, these this leather and boiled is whatever. Anyway, so that's cool that I got that on this video. Because, look, now you can see what it looks like. There's the horn helmet, basically. So there's not a lot of stylized graphics uh, in this game. I'm just gonna leave. There's not a lot of stylized graphics in this game, so you know something like that kind of will stand out. I kind I do kind of feel bad. <laughs> I want both roles, but it's legit. It's neat or greed. Um, you know, the healer was sitting there talking about, oh, I can, I can use that. I guess technically you can, you know, it's not striker specific, but, um, you know, I, if he rolled for it, I wouldn't have been, I would have been like, eh, you know, cause he'll find something that's better for healing later anyway. Um, but that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Man. So I'm 16. You can kill that dude when you're between five and say eight, right? So that goes to show you like how good the gear is from name drops versus this stuff that I got from dungeons, my level. These were, you know, uh, this is a quest, by the way, so that's why it's even good. This is boiled. You get that from the CV2 dungeons. Um, split, you can get split from here around this area. So as you can see, it's a... Uh, it's, it's slightly better, better. It's 9 AC, it's more flanking, more resilience, kind of, th well, more resilience. Um, what was I going into? I was talking about the difficulty. Oh, the combat. So, yeah, it affects your regen rates. So if you're a healer and you have that slight combat, you can step back and you can sit and you'll... It won't be full, like you're completely out of combat, but it will, uh... It will regen faster. So sorry, we got to a fight there and got distracted with the loot when I was talking about that. So hopefully that's kind of clear. But that was cool. I got that on video and won some loot. That was kind of neat. But that's it. So, you know, you see the names, you get a group together, you fight it, you roll for it. If it drops something you want, drops something you need. Uh, last time I killed that, I killed it on my healer and it gave me a really good healing chest plate. So I was like, oh, awesome. So actually, that, that nave has been really uh, lucky to me. I got a healing chest plate and uh, helmet and bracers from it. So I'm pretty stoked about that. I've always wanted these antlers, too. I got the bear helmet on my other dude. I got the antlers on this dude. So that's cool. Um, 
what else can I throw in? Beginner questions. So Blupiter, again, always to the north. You can see it during the day. It's always there. You got your compass on the map to show you which way is north. So, you know, Blupiter is that way. So if I wanted to go to the wall, there you go. There's the wall. I'll give you some distance so you can kind of see the um, distance rating between things. So this is the town. The campfire is probably right over here someplace. And there's the wall. So I'm probably somewhere... Like, this shows that it kind of points out, but it doesn't. I'm probably somewhere, like, here. And that's how far away that is. So your visual distance is probably like this. To kind of give you an example of your visual distance. Speaking of which, on to the next thing. Alright, so the next thing. Um, visual distance. Graphic settings. Uh, options. Graphics. If you have a potato like me, turn, turn it down to potato. Um, textures, that affects RAM more than processing. I should probably pull that up. Um, shadows, reflections, uh, keep them off if you want better frames per second. People have told me to lock it to 30, and you'll have better results than letting it, like, trying to go above 30. Um, view distance, I keep it 40%. That lets me see everything. I tested it out. Going, above, going to 50 doesn't really help much, even in zones that are huge. That you can see all the way across. So you definitely don't need this at 100. Shadows, vegetation, extra trees. I take all that down. This one's important because it gets dark in the game. If you want it less dark, slide it all the way down this way. So that's the settings. So I could probably pull the textures up because I got plenty of RAM uh, in my computer. I just, my processor's old. My video card's old. Uh, changes the volumetrics for fog, higher quality gives it better at their loss of performance. But I really don't need good clouds. I really don't need really great mist effects, although they are pretty cool in this game. So I'll turn that down and see how that works. But the game does run like crap. It is poo-poo. It's unoptimized. It'll probably always be unoptimized. Uh, games like they come out like this on Unity that are released like this and unoptimized will probably just stay unoptimized. They might get a little bit better over time, make slight improvements, but I'm never, I'm probably never going to get to 60. Like, they're not going to make that kind of improvement. I'll be at 30. Maybe at, maybe they'll chug less in other areas where I chug down to 25 or 20. Maybe that's the improvement I'll see, but I doubt I'll ever see 60 on this computer. Not for this game. Um, what else? What else, what else, what else? Defensive target versus attack target. I talked about that in my other video. So when you target yourself, you got a blue ring. That's your defensive target. And you have a separate target, your offensive target. So you don't have to... It's not like EverQuest where you target one thing or Final Fantasy where you have to either have somebody targeted or an enemy targeted. You can have both. So you can, have, if you're a healer, you can have your tank targeted and a monster targeted, which is pretty nice for a healer. Um, so keep that in mind. F is assist. So if you want to assist... Put your tank or another DPSer as your um, as your defensive target, and then just hit a, a F to assist. Um, I always put my sit because you're sitting. You're like a caster in this game. You're going to sit to regen. So I always I put that to like Q. I put stuff like that close by instead of like Z. So I'm always hitting Z. There is no uh, sprint. There is no travel speed other than Warden does have a travel speed. Warden's the only classic at the travel speed. Um, it's only 15%, though, but it helps. The so Wardens are good good gatherers for that reason, in my opinion. Um, what else? I'm not getting into class. If you want to know class details, I went into the details last time with uh, on my other video. It's like two hours long, so if you want to hear my thoughts about different classes, go check that one out. Group, always go to social. Go to... Uh, group, fine. Or oh, wait, what is it? Sorry. Go, f go to social, and right here, looking for group. So now I'm looking for group. You can hit different tags. Like, do you want to? Are you a striker, supporter? I can only hit striker now because I'm a striker. But you could do like hunting, hunting, dungeoneering. I don't think you really need that. They have different zones you can put in there. The five zones that are currently available. There's going to be more added later. Uh, I just put striker. That way, when people search, they see your they see you're looking. You can kind of look through here. There's level seven, level seventeen. There's a couple groups looking for more people. Um, so it's important to do that, but don't rely on that only. 
also do world chat. So you'd be like world, you know, uh, 17 striker, you know, or, you know, 17 warden looking for group for this, that, or the other thing. Do world, but also do zone. Just, you can, you can type one thing, right? And then scroll up. Oh, I'm sorry. Hit slash W, put you in world, scroll up, and you can type the same thing in world, right? So you can just easy to repeat it. I would do social, I would do zone, I, and I would also do world, because remember, some people are on alts. So they might be on a, alt, a different world and they see you advertising, they might be like, oh cool, I'll jump on my other character and do that. So keep that in mind when you're looking for group, because grouping is fun, and it's part of this game, it's a social game. For your abilities, you can highlight over your ability to see the details. You can hit Alt to see the next available level. So my next, I guess at level 50, you get another tier of this. This this strike was just added. Like, you, you'll, you'll eventually take that off your bar. That was just added to help you level from level 1 to whatever to get some abilities. Like Venom and Strike, the next one's level 18. I'll get another upgrade to that. Uh, also, if you have an ability, you can hover over it and then hit Alt, and it shows you the radius of that ability. So my Sedation Dart can hit pretty darn... What the heck? It's not that far. And these things do get blocked by landscape and rocks and stuff like that. There we go. Now you can kind of see it. So it's kind of like a... What is that? 120 degrees for... T that's 24 meters right there. That's a pretty good distance. That's like my bow, basically. That's bow range. Um, versus, like normal melee range it's hard to see because it's popping up over top of it but you can just hit alt for extra info and then also to see the ranges oh there we go i can do it over here take a little break there look at all this hustle bustle in a little newbie town um yeah so one thing i almost forgot that i should probably review is the flanking system so remember i said dps wants flanking right so plus two flanking what does that mean what does flanking mean modifies the value of your weapon positioning bonus. This stat is only active in combat stance. So when you're in combat stance, oops, when you got your weapons out and you're in combat stance, this is lantern stance, this is whatever, resting stance, sitting stance. Um, they got different stances, so check your stance requirements on thing. But the positioning system, so flanking. So what that does is that'll add I don't, this is where I'm not sure. I think it's a direct damage add, like it's a plus damage add. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's a plus to whatever add, right? So let me put, so see how my thing says 50 penetration, 35 penetration on my weapon? Here, let's do my sword. So my sword says 15 hit if I'm facing it. I get 10 penetration if I'm flanking it from the side. I get plus three damage. If I'm hitting it from the back, hitting it from the back's the best. <laughs> so, you know, versus a dagger, 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 um, where you get 35 penetration if you're hitting it from the back, and 15 penetration if you're hitting it from the side. Sorry, I can't, I'm not redoing it. I'm not redoing it. I'm immature. I can't help it. Um, whereas with my bow, you know, has different things. So that that directional is signified up here. So when you target a monster, it'll have the chevron, it'll show you the direction he is. I think this is like a status thing, but it shows you your position. So right now, I'm in the rear position. So I'm hit, like, how, how else could you tell with this guy? Look at it. It's a freaking plant. Where's its face? Where's its face? How can you, you know what I mean? Like, I know now that he kind of leans back, so I know... But, like, sometimes mobs you might not know. So now I'm from the side, see, because it's side. Now rear, so pointing down means rear. Side, pointing up means you're in the front. Now what do the colors mean? This is where a lot of people get it wrong. There's a lot of, like, people saying wrong information here. What the color means is your strongest stat. So my strongest, highest stat, and when I first started, I thought, the, somebody told me blue was best. So blue was your best. That's where you're going to do the most damage. So blue would be from behind, right? Because plus 35 pen, that makes sense. So I pull my I pull my weapons out. I target him. I get behind him, and it's blue. So that made sense to me. And I, if I get behind him, that's yellow. So that's 
second best. And if I get in front of him, I don't have anything for that. So that's worst. So that made sense, right? But when I put my sword on... Duke -a -duke -a -duke, get out of it. You can't switch swords while you're in combat. When I put my sword on, which has 15 in the front, hit 10 penetration on the side, and 3 damage in the back... Well, damage is the best out of all those, in my opinion, right? A lot of people consider that. So why is it red from the back? Why is it yellow from the side? And why is it blue from the front again? Well, is it just positional? So front means blue? Or what's what's going on? So basically what it means is all that just to tell you what it means, right? It just goes by your highest number. It's just saying, hey, it's in the front is blue because it's 15. It's The system's not smart enough to say 15 hit is better than 10 pen or worse than three damage. The system's not smart enough, so it just tells you what, whatever, the color changes based on the highest. So highest is blue, 15. Y 10 is yellow, because that's second highest. And then three is gonna tell me it's the worst. When the reality is, for, for people on the forums, like damage is way better than hit. Like hit's the worst. Hit is the worst, which hit is crit. Hits the worst. I, maybe not at high levels when you stack it, but right now hits the worst. Penetration equals one damage. I think 10 penetration equals one damage only if there's like 50% armor. Because penetration is penetrating their armor. Um, but overall, overall best is damage. So that hitting them from the back with the swords is better than hitting them from the front with plus hit. But... If I was soloing, I would want that sword because I can't get behind them soloing. So I'm going to want some kind of benefit. You know what I mean? So 15 hits better than nothing. If I was wearing, if I had a dagger, so that's why I say earlier, I swap them. If I had this dagger in my main hand, I wouldn't be getting anything from that. So now that you know what the positioning is and the flanking is and all that stuff, we can get into what is flanking. So flanking directly affects this. So if I go into my combat stance, see how it gives me plus eight now. Because it's only effective in combat stance. So you don't see it when you're looking at your clues like this. All my penetration added up equals 8. So it's going to give me plus 8. Well, that's very important when you're talking about damage. Because look how that scales. So penetration's not that great unless it's on a high armored mob. Right? But plus damage, is that's like legit damage, right? So that's not just 3 damage. That's 3 plus 8. Right? So that's a lot of extra damage when I hit with my sword from the back when I have flanking stacked on my gear. So that's the whole point for DPS, right? Now there's other stuff. I can't get into tanks. I haven't played tanks, uh, but there's like parrying and, and, um, and, and stuff like that that goes into the whole tanking thing. Healers have plus heal, right? Uh, haste is great. That, that, that goes for auto attack and it goes for your cooldowns on your skills. Um, oh, the haste. I almost remember what it does. How does the formula work for haste? I, re I forgot this in my last video, too. It's right on the tip of my tongue, and I'm probably going to skip it again. Um, haste, 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 haste. So, if you had 13 haste, is that 13% haste? No, it's not. Um, so how much haste would drop it down depends on your skill, like how long your skill is. So I think if you had like, ah, I, f I forget the formula, it's not a direct percent, but it, it, it's a good amount. So haste matters. Regen matters, but keep in mind, regen only matters when you're allowed to regen it. When you're pure in combat, it doesn't matter. You get no regen. But what a lot of people will tell you that regen doesn't matter. Stamina regen doesn't matter. Hit point regen doesn't matter because when you're in combat, you don't regen. But what they forget is what I showed you earlier. You do have a partial combat status. You have two combat status one full combat and one partial combat so when you're in partial combat you are getting regen you can sit down you'll get more when you're standing and you'll get more when you sit down when you're in partial than when you're in full combat so regening stamina for healer is a good stat in hit point maybe not as important but still a good stat so keep that in mind also when you're soloing you usually blow all your Stamina and you're low on hit points so that helps when you sit down and you're regening it helps you solo So they are good viable stats uh, healers also get plus healing they get plus to heal which would be like their version of damage Also, I think weapons that give damage go directly towards healing So 
if you look at a healing spell, so thankfully wardens have healing. Uh, does it say damage? Uh, plus seven health every four seconds. So I think, I think, somebody told me, I haven't tested it myself, but I think the damage goes, like, if goes directly towards healing, too. Not sure how that works. I could be completely wrong about that. But, um, they do have the healing stuff. Haste is good for your healing spells. Um, you know, so you gotta pay attention to your stats, and that's kind of what kind of this game is. It's like a very EverQuest statty thing. You're not getting 300 points or something. You're getting 10 or 20 points here, there, 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 and it stacks up kind of thing. Kind of like how EverQuest was. Very EverQuest, um, um, EverQuest, uh, Dark Age Camelot PvE side, not PvP. There's no PvP in this game, thankfully. It's one of the things I like about it. I'm tired of PvP and games messing up balancing and stuff like that. I just want a good PvE co-op system. That's one of the reasons why I like this game. Um, so I think that is about it. Um, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Share it around so people can see it. It helped you out. It might help somebody else out. It helps me out when you share it around. Uh, if you're not a subscribe, subscriber, subscribe. You know how people always throw that thing up? Like They show you the stats like... Only 15% of my subscribers watch my videos. Only, you know, I'm like, I'm jealous. I wish I had that. <laughs> it's like 2 or 3% of you guys out there that are subscribers are watching us. So if you are a subscriber and you're watching my videos on a regular basis, I love you. You're important to me. Because, like, not a lot of people do that. Most of my views come from Google searches and algorithms and keywording my stuff correctly. And, like, interaction. So the algorithm goes, ah, oh, like, people are digging this. They're giving it likes, they're giving it comments, you know, throw it out there more, recommend it more. You know, that snowball effect is how my videos get out there more than just people going, oh, look, it's the game is, I'm going to watch one of his videos regardless of what game it is. So I do appreciate you guys who just, you know, hang out there, maybe like my personality or whatever. You, you've seen some of my other videos. I, I do appreciate you guys. Um, you're, you're the core. And to anybody who's new, more welcome to become a subscriber. I'd appreciate it. I'm, I, you know, I'm a father I'm a husband, full-time, uh, um, <laughs> most of the time I'm full-time employed, <laughs> most of the time I'm fully employed, I got side gigs, side hustles like this one, um, so I don't have, I can't put out videos consistently like a lot of, like, people who just sit home and they're just YouTubers, I'd love to do it, I'd love to have, uh, you know, um, a channel where I, where I could do that and just focus on that, that would be really cool. Maybe when I retire, but I'm not at, I'm not that old yet. I uh, still got a little ways to go. So, um, that's about it. And uh, I guess I really, I'm, I'm so that's so cool. I got that. I hope I, nobody's like you took that from the level five dudes or something like that. I just like I can hear somebody saying that. Don't say it because that was better gear, legit for me. That's that's how good. That's how good the stuff from that is. Like I could probably sell that for gold. Maybe I don't know, fifty silver. I don't think armor goes for, like, that kind of armor isn't going to sell for much. That would be for looks if it did sell. That's that's not, like, they're not super stats. Like, but the plus healing gloves from another monster that's, like, level, I don't know, 8. It drops plus healing gloves. They sell for, um, they sell for, uh, like, 1 gold. Really, they should sell for, like, 50 silver, but people try to get a gold, gold and a half for them. Um, so you can make decent money selling, farming and selling this stuff. I think the more people do that, the harder it will be, though. Anyway, um, looking for a tank. As far as classes, I will tell you, before I go, I will do a little bit of class stuff. What class should I play? What's important? They're all important. You need a tank. You need maybe one or two tanks. You need a supporter, a healer. You need... At least one healer. You it, two is better. Two healers is ideal. Ideally, you want a healer like a duelist and a sentinel, plus a warlord. So one of the two primary healers plus a warlord who's kind of like a healer slash bard. They're very helpful when you combine the two. Um, but you definitely, regardless, you want two healers. Sentinel, duelist, two sentinels. It doesn't matter. You, you ideally you want two healers, a tank, three DPS in your group. Um, you can substitute a tank for DPS, you know, you're still, tanks are still doing DPS, and they can, they can swap out and do two-handed, too, so, you know, it's not like tanks do horrible DPS in this game, they do pretty decent DPS, 
you know, the DPS that strikers do, it's it's above what everybody else does, but it's not like miles above like nobody. You know, the the like nobody's like touching them or something. Even the oh war song that was one of my characters' names. That was my uh, that was one of my bard's names in Ikea. I use that a lot. War I use war a lot. War war lord war song. Um, war cry. I did a bard named War Cry before. I do that a lot. That's funny. I guarantee you he's gonna be a warlord. <laughs> I guarantee you 100. I would be shocked if he isn't. Anyway, sorry, got distracted there. Um. Every class is needed. Um, healers are needed. Tanks are needed. DPS is needed. Who's the most? Are, are DPSers looking for group all the time, like World of Warcraft? Nope. Um, if you look through this, they want a tank. They want a healer. Uh, they want a tank. I think a lot of the tanks are higher level. <laughs> <laughs> Tanks are like one of the most played, but I think at lower levels, at lower levels, there's probably a little bit of a lack of tanks just because all the tanks got high level. Um, but I would say probably DPS might be the least played because you need three of them. They're the most played, but you, you want three of them in your group. So when it comes to like looking for group, you have no problem as a DPS getting a group. Um, Healers, I don't think you have much of a. It, it really just depends. Sometimes you know, you know, it depends. Sometimes there's an overabundance of tanks on. It. Sometimes there's an overabundance of healers on. It. Sometimes there's an overabundance of DPS on. It. it really just depends on what people are playing. Most people have you have three character slots, so most people have um, a tank, they have a, a support and a striker. That's your three character slots. And then they'll they'll flip flop between alts and stuff like that, depending on you know what they can find as far as a group. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I I already said goodbye once and I kept yip yapping. Um, so I'll say say farewell again. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share. Don't forget, I just did a two hour video. It has all the stuff I talked about, but more talks about the game. So if you're on the fence about the game, you want to see more gameplay, more group content instead of me just walking around talking check out that video go into my uh, channel it'll be the one right before this where you can go into my playlist I keep everything organized so if you want to see my EverQuest videos go into the EverQuest playlist if you want to see you know whatever my Terraria videos go and check that out um, you know whatever you're into whatever games you're into I uh, I do videos based on what I'm playing I can't you know I I'm trying to live a life plus be a gamer plus try and make some videos that's a lot of time right there. So that's like 100%, 110% time utilized. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope I hope you do like this video. Uh, feel free to send Deeps a friend request if uh, if you joined in because you've seen one of my videos. I'd appreciate knowing it. If you just say, hey, I, I, I watched one of your videos and it made me want to play the game and give it a shot. I'd appreciate knowing that, you know. You, as content creators, we don't know what what's happening out there. We see the views. But we, that's all we know. We don't know, you know, did it did it have any effect? Did it have a good effect, a bad effect, or what? So, appreciate any feedback, or just leave it in the comments and let me know. You know, it helped the algorithm anyway. All right, I think that's everything. I'm sure I'll think of 20 things that I didn't bring up or explain correctly afterwards. I always do. That's the creator's curse in any form of art or anything I've ever created. I always see the flaws. I always see what I could have done better. But yeah, sometimes you just gotta let it go. All right. I'll see you in the next video.